entered into this sort of giveaway thing um, on this book. I'll leave a link to their page on Facebook and their website in the description below. But basically this book, they give away free books in exchange for an honest book review that they will put up on their website, which is amazing. Also, it's only based in the Philippines, so if you want to check it out, you can um, like try for their giveaways if you aren't in the, living in the Philippines. I learned yesterday that I won a copy of Ink Death by Cornelia Funk, which is um, the third book in a trilogy, the Ink World trilogy. I haven't read it yet. I have read Ink Heart and Ink Spell. I remember loving Ink Heart. Ink Spell was kind of a disappointment, but I think it's still good enough that I want to fi act, finally finish the trilogy after after so long. I've reread Ink Heart so much um, in the past because I just absolutely loved it. So if you don't know what Ink Heart is about, it's basically there's um, this girl named Meggy. Um, her father is a book doctor. She He like repairs books and things like that. There's like a mysterious man who shows up at their house and then things just kind of go downhill from there. And this mysterious man is someone that Maggie and her dad knew from when Maggie was younger. So I'm wearing red today because the first book is gonna be ink heart. So let's go get it. Okay, um, this is actually higher than I thought it would be. So if you can't already tell, I already, you know, kind of cheated. Um, ink heart used to be there and ink spell used to be in a higher shelf because I didn't like it. This is kind of like the shelf for the stuff I like. So I'm gonna grab, oh my gosh. Ah, ink heart, there it is. Oh, look at that beautiful cover. So there, we're gonna be reading um, Ink Heart and then Ink Spell next. You can kind of tell that's older. I'm pretty sure I wrote my name I'm on the inside too, but I can't like open it right now because ah, I can't reach stuff. Also, you'll notice that um, it's a little damaged, but there's still, like a plastic covering, which is kind of weird. But that's because I used to not like wrapping my books in plastic cover, but then, you know, like I have sweaty hands, so there's like some damage there. Also that spine, ooh. Also the quality of the book is just really, it's just not the best. I like the the cover. So aside from my sweaty hands, it's just a really crappy cover. But ugh, look at that, I'm excited. Okay, I'm gonna do like a smell session of this book before I read it. Actually before I smell it, let's just like open the book because you know, I, apparently in book reading vlogs, you have to like, be like super aesthetic like wow look at that spine the detail Ooh, like oh this is unprofessional but whatever oh what is that like oh i think i tried to scratch out like <laughs> the price tag i should i should stop doing that and then we'll open it a little bit um ooh, the smell of books oh. don't mind me oh i smell my books don't mind yeah, I always smell my book. <sighs> There's nothing addicting like, like smelling a book. But anyway, um, this is one of my favorite books of all time, and I don't know. I just started to love smelling books ever since I read this book. Oh man, is this weird? I, I know, I know for a fact a lot of bookworms do this, but is it weird like seeing me smell books? Like, is it, is it weird? Like, is it like watching someone do drugs? Um, I know some of you probably know what that looks like. But, um, I, I personally don't, but, oh, let's just smell this. <sighs> I think I have a problem, so I'm gonna stop here. So some vlog, reading vlogs, like, show, like, the vlogger, um, like, reading the books, and it's, like, it's, like, super aesthetic and stuff. There's no, like, aesthetic, like, part of our house, so I'm not gonna do that. Plus, just, that's just weird. I just feel like when I'm watching like vlogs like that, it's just like, I'm like intruding someone's privacy. Like someone's reading and I'm just like staring at them watching. Like, oh, like look at you, you're reading. Look, you look so fascinating. Yeah, so I'm not gonna do that. So whenever I get to a halfway point and then I end a book, um, then start another book, I'll continue this reading vlog and then you'll kind of see where I'm at. Important fact, very important fact, is Maggie and her father Mo are like die hard, Build your files like they are the definition of a bookworm, and you'll we'll meet more cool characters who are also bookworms um, throughout the rest of the book. But this is a book lover's book. I'm pretty sure that's what like one of the blurbs say. If you love books, or if you'd like to get into reading books, Ink Heart is the book for you. So I've read like a lot of books when I was younger, but it kind of slowed down later on. And then I borrowed Ink Heart from a classmate um, when I was in high school. And ever since, I have been a committed 
committed, committed bookworm. Because Inkar just talks a lot about a love for books and a passion for books. Like the stories and the writing, just oh, it's for every book lover out there. So read Inkar. I mean, if you're watching a booktube video, you're probably a bookworm. So go read Inkar with me right now. Go. Okay, so I've reached a halfway point, about a halfway point, um, through Inkheart. I'm, I'm pretty sure the chapter I was reading last night I didn't finish because I was just so tired last night. And it's been a while since I've filmed, but here it is. I'm halfway through Inkheart and I have thoughts. So, like I said before, I've read Inkheart so many times, probably like four or five times, which is a lot for me. I mean, because it's a thick book and the fact that I've read it so many times says something that I really like this book. However, reading it now, I kind of have a different perspective on it. Part of it, I think, is one, it's a reread, so there's a lot of things that I'm just kind of revisiting and I'm just like, okay, I remember this part and so on. And Another thing is, this is middle grade, so I matured a lot as a reader since I read this. Uh, this is one of the first books that got me into reading, and I read a lot of books since then. So I'm gonna say I didn't enjoy this as much as I used to. I still love it. I think my current rating on Goodreads is five stars for this book for my previous reads. But now I think I'm gonna bump it down to four stars because I don't think five stars necessarily reflect how I feel about this book anymore. Now when I started reading card again, I pretty much memorized the first paragraph which was like, rain fell that night, fine whispering rain, and years later Maggie would remember it like fingers tapping on a window pane. But it was funny because when I read it again, the feeling that I had before reading it wasn't the same. You know how like some people when they read, um, they like hear a voice in their head. I know other people don't but I do. And when I read this when I was younger, I would always read it and like, almost like Kate Blanchett was reading it to me like, rain fell that night, a fine whispering rain. It's like that kind of reading. But when I started reading this again, it was more like, rain fell that night, a fine whispering rain. Probably because I've reread this so much that I'm like, okay, I know what this is gonna say. I've read some reviews where they said that even though this is middle grade, um, it's too dark for middle grade. I personally don't think it is. There's some amount of light swearing and there's some like dark parts, like somewhat disturbing parts, but it wasn't YA dark. It wasn't like gory and things like that. It was just like super duper creepy, like middle grade horror sort of level, although this isn't really horror. I will say that this is still middle grade. The writing style, even though it is very descriptive, it's very engaging, and it's more plot driven than character driven, it's still very, very straightforward and simple. It's not young adult or adult at all. I forgot to mention, I'm gonna try to keep my review of Ink Heart spoiler free. When I start reading Ink Spell and Ink Death, I'll probably have spoilers for Ink Heart when I talk about Ink Spell, and then I'll probably have spoilers for Ink Heart and Ink Spell when I talk about Ink Death because, you know, these are sequels. But as much as possible, all throughout, I'll try to keep it spoiler free. One of the things that I noticed, I'm rereading this now as an older reader, is that Maggie is just super annoying. I know she's a 12 year old and when I was younger, I felt like I could relate to Maggie, like her frustrations and things like that. But reading it now as a 21 year old is like, Oh man, she's just like super annoying. Maybe that's because I get annoyed by like younger, younger teenagers. Overall, Meg was just annoying. Like she says things that are like, oh, that's so stupid. But I really liked her when I read this when I was younger. Now it's just like, stop. So Mo, Maggie's father, is also kind of annoying. The relationship between Maggie and Mo, like daughter and father, is sort of emphasizing the book that they like they only had each other and that their relationship was perfect, like they loved each other so much. But reading about Mo and Maggie here, there's not a lot of trust. They keep questioning each other's motives and like they don't tell each other stuff, which is like, why does the author keep implying that Maggie and Mo have a good relationship when obviously they don't? Also, another thing that <laughs> makes this middle grade is the amount of plot conveniences in this book. When I was younger, I didn't really notice them, but reading it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, why did I not see that? It's so obvious. So if you've been on booktube um, for a while now, you've probably heard of Murphy Napier. Um, she's a popular booktuber and she loves Harry Potter. I do too. But when she reread it as an adult, she saw so many plot holes and conveniences. And that's kind of how I feel about Inkheart now. Like, there were so many parts of that. Wow, that's incredibly convenient. Like, wow, that just happened. Like, 
for the, just for the it's plot driven it's like for the sake of the story that's why it's middle grade because it's like reading it as a young adult it's not really believable one of the biggest plot conveniences i've noticed so far is so these these are like light spoilers but not really but there's a part where the main characters they're sort of captured um, by these evil men, I think it was vague enough, and later on they escape. But somehow, somehow, they still had money to survive and get food and all that. They were captured by evil men and nobody took their money. That just doesn't make sense at all. The other plot convenience, no, actually, it's a plot hole. Um, I've seen um, just recently about this part. There was a part where they run away um, in a car and then something happens to the car that they have to leave it and try to push it um, off the side of the road. But then, later on, the person who owns the car, there's this group, right? And the person who owns the car leaves and somehow drives herself home. <laughs> Not even get like a taxi or anything. She drives herself home. Did she just like buy another car or did she just pick that car up that they left on the side of the road? It doesn't make sense. So major plot hole slash plot conveniences over here. I will say though that um, Eleanor, the person I mentioned, um, she is my favorite character so far. Because Maggie and Mo, they're like super, they don't change, they don't develop. But Eleanor, she's changed a lot, even in just like roughly 300 pages. Like she's like super stern and like super strict at the beginning, but now she's, ha she has like a soft spot. Um, she she's more mild. She's more loving. She's uh, more vulnerable. She's open about talking about her insecurities and things like that. And I just love her. Aside from her love of books, she's just really developed well as a character, um, even in just three hundred pages. I will say um, one of the strengths that I've seen in the book so far is how well it foreshadows things that are going to happen in a way that's not forced down your throat. Every now and then the author is like implying that something terrible is going to happen even in a very like mediocre situation. Like the situation could be they're driving or they're just walking and then they just feel something that is going to happen. And it's like super subtle that it's not like something terrible is going to happen. It's just like the set the descriptions of the setting and just like the prose is beautiful in this book. And so I love that about this so far. I've reached a point now, um, about this point, where I've already read one of my favorite chapters in this book, and really in all the books I've read before. If you read Inkheart, or if you have a copy of Inkheart, um, it will be on chapter 28. If you haven't read Inkheart, do not read that part yet, because when that part comes and it's your first time reading, it will hit you hard. So something happens to Eleanor and it's just like the emotions in that chapter it's only four pages long I'm pretty sure I just checked last night and it was so impactful like I felt Eleanor's pain and frustration and anger and it was just a really well written chapter period so that is my update for now. It's kind of a long update. It's pretty much kind of a review. Um, I don't know if there'll be a lot to add by the time I finish this book since I already kind of know what's going to happen, but I'll still try to keep uh, my comments fresh and new for those who are not, who have not yet read Inkheart. And then I'll move on to Ink Spell, and then we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> hey guys, so I just finished Inkheart last night and I have thoughts. So last time I said that the relationship between uh, Mo and Maggie, the main characters in this book, during the first part was like pretty, there's not a lot of trust there, but I realized I'm um, reading through the second part that it developed more in the second half because they were separated and they missed each other and you could just feel both of their pain, how much they missed each other and how much they relied on each other um, since they were all that the other had. Reading the second half was really interesting because, again, I remembered quite a bit from what I read when I read it before, but there were a lot of parts that I felt like I was rediscovering. A lot of parts where there were some details that I'm pretty sure I had totally looked over when I was younger that now I came to appreciate more, especially in terms of 
um, character development with um, Eleanor. She is probably one of my favorite characters in this book and really of all time. She's just really unique. She's just really human. She has a lot of weaknesses, but she has a lot of strengths too that are so well um, described and portrayed in this book. As opposed to the first half, the second half of the book got pretty dark. I'm pretty sure that's a well-known fact with Encart. Like the first half is pretty, pretty chill. It's, it's kind of has a like a mysterious thriller almost vibe to it. Not like intense thriller, just like there's a lot of stuff going on. But the second half is really dark. There's a lot of things that can be disturbing for younger middle grade readers. Although it's still light enough that I wouldn't classify this as YA just because it's dark. Because there are a lot of dark middle grade books. They have some horror elements. Um, this, one, this one doesn't have too many horror elements. It's just like really dark, um, gruesome um, parts. But this was still very much middle grade. The ending um, was really, really good. When I got to the last chapters, it felt so good. It felt like I was rediscovering this whole story again because it was just super satisfying. Like everyone came together. There were some um, loose ends that are gonna be tied in the next books, I'm pretty sure. But the way it ended, the story felt complete. Um, it was satisfying. Um, Everyone's reunited and happy, though some of the things that happened didn't go as planned. I think I said in, in an earlier clip that I was thinking of bumping my rating down to four stars because this is currently a five star book that according to my rating on Goodreads, but just reading the last chapters, man, I can't bump it down to four stars. This story is really still very good, even though it is a reread, which is saying something because there's some books that... I read that I reread and then the second time around I was just no that was not for me I mean that's not for me anymore I'm keeping this book as a five-star book so that will be my review for Ink Heart and now on to the next book Whew. Ink Spell okay so whew, that was interesting um, so Ink Spell is the second book in the Ink World trilogy so I remember I loved Ink Heart so much the first time I read it that I wanted to get into the second book so bad immediately. I think it I think it took a while before I actually got the chance to purchase this. Um, I actually think my mom bought this for me. Anyway, so I was super excited to get into this story. However, I remember it being feeling so long. So this is actually thicker than Ink Heart. Like you can kind of see the difference there. I don't know. But <laughs> Um, this, as I remember, was kind of disappointing. But looking back now, I feel like part of it is because I had certain expectations for this book. So in Ink Heart, it's mostly set in our world, right? And um, it, it is set in, in our world. And there are references to the the world of Ink Heart, the book. But Ink Spell, I'm pretty sure it's only like a th the first third of it is set in our world and they they go over to the ink world the rest of the story and i'm pretty sure this goes the same for ink death is set in the ink world going into this book i expected sort of almost like a contemporary-ish fantasy but the last two thirds of the book actually felt more like high fantasy because we were just fully immersed in this other world and the entire time we were there i was like man i want to want to experience this world more through the lens of the real world i guess you could say so i had the wrong expectations for this book like completely so hopefully this second time around reading this knowing that it will feel more like high fantasy um in the latter two thirds of the book i'll be better prepared and have like i guess i can think more clearly and judge more clearly how good or how bad this book is and so i'll give you an update on my thoughts on ink spell um when i reach the halfway point again it, it will be about 300 pages in also i don't know if you noticed but um from the earlier clips in this vlog my books looked pretty damaged like they were like like the cover was like peeling like on the sides but now it looks sort of better now let me show you my copy of ink heart there, like, there's not a lot of it. And that's because I actually colored um, with felt tip markers um, the spines. I mean, if you look at it closely, you'll see, but from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. Like, it looks actually like the book is almost new. If you look closely, you'll see, yep, that's felt tip marker right there. I just realized in an earlier clip that I call this thing a readathon, um, which it is not. I just recently learned that. Um, this is not, not what you call a readathon. I mean, this is more like a reading vlog, I could say. Maybe even a book talk. I need to look more into what all these 
terms where bookish videos mean because <laughs> um, it's not a readathon because apparently a readathon is when you have like this challenge to read as many books as you can for a certain period of time and I'm taking my time um, with Inkheart so this is not a readathon but that will be it for now for Inkheart and Inkspell. I'll see you in the next clip. In all honesty there are a lot of things that I probably should be doing now but I have been studying all day that I'm just kind of tired and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this because I already reached um, a halfway point um, the halfway point of the second book of the Inkworld trilogy Ink Spell. Man the frame is kind of weird. Anyway I have thoughts about this book. First of all I think it worked. Last time I said that I was disappointed the first time I read this because I had different expectations of what the book was like but now because I knew that it was gonna have a high fantasy feel I'm actually loving this, like actually loving the story. It's funny because Inkheart, I've read so many times that I can tell you what happens from start to finish pretty much just right off the bat. But this one, and I only remember a few details. So reading, rereading this now, it's just like, I feel like it's my first time reading it. In some ways, I actually like this book better than the first book. It's weird because um, <laughs> I remember really hating this book the first time I read it, but now I actually like this book because this book has so many emotional parts. There are a lot of parts where you feel pain and loss. Um, you, you feel for the characters, really. For example, and this is going to be a totally spoilery section, so forgive me for that. But for example, um, Dustfinger, when he finally gets back to his world, when he finally sees his wife, when he finally sees his daughter, Oh man, that was that was super emotional. Also, another spoiler: um, when Mo gets shot and Reese has to take care of him for so many days, that was super emotional too. There's just a lot of emotions going on in this book. And let me read you something. It's at the back of the book. Uh, this is from Publishers Weekly. It says, "Spellbinding expertly mixes joy, pain, suspense, and magic." And that is how Ink Spell is so far. Now you probably noticed. That I haven't mentioned Maggie or Farron yet. I also forgot that I continue to love Eleanor in this book and I know that I I'm pretty sure that she doesn't really appear um, in the second half of the book which is kind of a bummer but chapters that she's in it's just still really powerful. You just see all the conflicting thoughts in her head and just you really see her character develop and she just has a lot of personality as opposed to many of the other characters really. Now I did want to talk about things that I don't like about Ink Spell. Number one, this is, I'm just gonna keep this part brief, but it's kind of still a big deal. So, Maggie and Farid have a thing. And the thing is, in the first book, Maggie is 12 years old, and this is, Ink Spell is set about a year later, so Maggie is about 13. And I remember clearly reading Ink Heart that Farid is three to four years older than Maggie. And so, Farid is anywhere from he could be 17, 16 or 17. And they he has a thing with a 13 year old. I have a problem with that. And here's the thing, let me read you another part of the book. Well, not another part of the book, it's just what the author wrote um, in the, like the dedication. Let me read it to you. Okay, so it says here, um, and of course, as almost always, last but for sure not least, for Anna, wonderful, wonderful Anna, who had this story told to her on many walks, encouraged and advised me, and let me know what was good and what could still be improved. I very much hope that the story of Maggie and Farid has its fair share of the book now. So, apparently, Maggie and Farid weren't really supposed to have a thing when Cornelia Funk wrote this, but then Anna, I, I'm pretty sure um, Anna is Cornelia Funk's daughter, because I'm pretty sure she's the same person that Ankhart is dedicated to. And so it's just because of Anna that Maggie and Farid have a love thing. It's so, so annoying. It's like super odd. It, it's totally unnecessary really. So I don't like it. The other thing is that this book should not be called Ink Spell. It should be called Maggie Makes Stupid Decisions because <laughs> Maggie makes stupid decisions. Okay, in the first book, I didn't really like Maggie a lot. She's super annoying, but you can kind of understand because she's a 12 year old and she might have a lot of insecurities and just she, she feels more secure with her father. That's why when they get separated and all this stuff goes down, like you could, I can kind of forgive her for being, 
you know, a little annoying because, you know, she's really vulnerable and she's going through a hard time. But here, I know it's only been a year, but <laughs> here's the thing. Ink Spell reads like a young adult book. It does not read like a middle grade book at all. It's like, it's more high fantasy. There's romance, like, and <laughs> it's, it's not middle grade. Like, I changed my shelf on Goodreads for this book to young adult because I wouldn't recommend it personally to middle grade readers. With that kind of perspective, you would, th you would think or you would feel that Maggie has somehow um, matured, right? But she doesn't. And the thing is, she's even worse than in the first book because in the first book, she's just kind of annoying, but she was forgivable. But in this book, she is straight up stupid. Because, first of all, so she, um, after the events of Ink Heart, she is obsessed with the book. She wants to go into the book, um, into the Ink World, as she calls it, um, because of her mother's stories and just all the things that she hears about this place. And here's the thing. If I'm being honest, like there are a lot of books that I've read that I'm like, I really want to visit this place. This is awesome. You want to be in that story. But the more I think about it, I really don't. Like, for example, I would love to go to Narnia, but there are a lot of crazy things that happen there. Even in Narnia, Narnia is like a kid's book, but that I wouldn't want to stay there too long. And, or, I mean, of course there's the Hunger Games. It's a cool concept, but you wouldn't want to be in it. Maggie, Maggie is obsessed with it. And the thing is, she hasn't even read Inkheart. She just heard stories from her mother. And it's so weird. Like, she wants to be in this world, even though she knows that it's dangerous. And against her father's wishes, she reads herself into the book. <laughs> when she finally arrives, she's like, oh no, what have I done? And I'm like, yeah, Maggie, what have you done? That was stupid. Why did you do that? She knew she was going to get into trouble because she had no plan whatsoever to get how to get back. She just she just thought, oh, Finoglio's there, so he's probably gonna write me back. But what kind of assurance does, he, does she have that she's gonna be able to get back to the real world? So I thought that was kind of stupid. I remember at the part where kind of um, Finoglio discovers that his story has kind of taken a darker turn because one of his main characters, like the good guy, Cosimo, or Cosimo, I don't know how to say his name, Cosimo the Fair, he died, and now the Adderhead, which is like, the evil king of a neighboring country or kingdom, whatever, um, is trying to take over. And the Adderhead is like the villain. He's like the boss villain <laughs> as compared to Capricorn, who's kind of like a side villain. And so the Adderhead is now taking over the ink world. And so Venoglio's plan is to resurrect Cosimo. And at first, Maggie is kind of smart. Maggie's like, you shouldn't do that because, you know, that's going to be messed up. But here's the thing when the Adderhead comes and there's this commotion and granted there are a lot of injuries like in this commotion that happens um Maggie's like oh my gosh this is terrible so she's like okay Finoglio I'm gonna do it she already had a chance to just let things be I mean she's gonna leave the this world soon anyway but guess what she does she's like oh man I'm gonna make do something stupid again because I can why? Why? Why is Maggie the main character of this book? I do not understand. I'm just glad that even though Maggie's technically the main character, that we don't spend as much time with her as in Inkheart. We actually spend more time with with Risa and Dustfinger and Eleanor. A little bit of time with Maggie, but not as much. And thankfully, we don't spend too much time with her because I absolutely hate her. So those are my thoughts about Ink Spell so far. I'm pretty sure I'm actually gonna like this. Um, currently, my rating is three stars. I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna bump it up to four at this point, although I still have halfway to go and my feelings might change. Maybe the dragging parts are in the second half, so we'll see. But I think part of the reason that I'm actually enjoying this more is because now I'm reading more intentionally. I'm actually reading um, for, for this vlog and for this um, and to write, I guess, a more stru structured review for this book. So I'm looking out for things. But if I just read this just for the sake of entertainment, maybe I wouldn't like it as much. Maybe this would stay a three star read. Okay. So don't mind my background because this is this just happens to be the most convenient place to film right now. So, Ink Spell. I finished it um, last night actually, and 
boy, I had a lot of feelings about it. So I'm gonna be talking about some problems I had with Ink Spell because it does have a lot of problems, but also I'm gonna be talking about some things that I really, really loved um, in Ink Spell. This will kind of serve as mainly a book review for this entire book, not just the, the second half of the book. So one, problem number one is, for the most part, it's actually really good. Like the pacing is okay, but then we reach about the 400 to 550-ish mark or those pages, and then it starts to feel meandering, like we're just going from one place to another and we don't really have a direction and nothing's really happening. So I think that's the main reason that a lot of people didn't like Ink Spell as much as they did Ink Heart. Because in the latter part of the book, people start to lose their interest in it because you're just going from place to place and nothing is really progressing. We're just waiting for some bad thing to happen to the characters but we're not getting it as quickly as we'd like. Problem number two for me is the romance between Maggie and Farid. I felt that it was really, really unnecessary, and as I said um, in the previous clip, I'm pretty sure that Cornelia Funk did it just because of um, one of the people that she dedicated this book to. If I could change one thing about this book to make it five stars, currently I've rated it four stars, but we'll get more into the details later. But anyway, if I could change one thing about this book to make it a five star book, it would be to eliminate the romance between Maggie and Fair because that was just really forced. It, it, would, it felt really awkward. It just didn't feel necessary. I think I would have been invested more in Maggie and Farad if they were just like really, really good friends because they went through a lot of stuff together. And if they just developed their friendship more because of going through those things, I would have liked this more because in the first book, there's really no hint of Maggie and Farad liking each other. I, I think Okay, I think Farad liked Maggie. But all of a sudden, in this second book, they're interested in each other and like they start noticing like their eyelashes or whatever. So it was just really forced and wasn't really needed in this story. Problem number three is, again, Maggie makes stupid decisions should be the title of this book because most of the problems that happened are because of Maggie's doing. She's not a very likable character at all. I rooted for almost all the characters except for Maggie and Farid, which is bad because Maggie's supposed to be the main character of this story. And I didn't like her at all. Problem number four is that all throughout this book, first of all from Mag Maggie's perspective and then later on even um, the rest of um, the people who came from our world, so that's Maggie and Mo and Risa. One problem I have with this book is that it showed how living in a fictional world or story is much more preferable to living in the real world. First, Maggie just wanted to visit the ink world, right? But then later on, she's like, I want to stay here. And here's the thing, if it was like the, Chron the Chronicles of Narnia, and it was like everything's magical, and even though bad stuff happens, for the most part, it's really n a nice place, I would have been okay with that. I would have been like, yeah, I want to live in Narnia. But this is the ink world, and the ink world is really, really dangerous. In fact, you don't see much of the magic as much as you see the danger and how terrible everything is in this world. There's a lot of sexism, there's slavery, there's a lot of killing, and just a lot of stuff that happens that would make me not want to live there so I never really understood why Maggie and Mortimer and Risa would want to stay in this world. Also aside from that I just think even though I am a bookworm and I really love to read and I would love to visit the places um, that I read about I think almost every bookworm knows that no matter how much you love what you're reading, you always feel the need to come back to the real world. And we see that in a lot of classic fairy tales like The Wizards of Oz, um, Alice in Wonderland. Everyone goes home. Everyone knows how home is important. And I think that this book didn't give a very positive message because if you follow that message, if you believe that, then you wouldn't be able to live your life to the fullest just because you're so sucked in what you're reading or what you're watching for that matter and that you're not enjoying life in the real world. Another problem that I have is constant shifting of POVs or the point of views. In the first book, it's pretty pretty consistent. Like when we get into a chapter, we see a character and then we follow that character's point of view all throughout the chapter. Or there would be section breaks within the chapter where we shift point of views. However, in this book, especially in the second half, I feel like it wasn't edited well enough because there were just a lot of chapters where we shift from one perspective to another and then we skip to another in a span of five paragraphs or so. And it just was really confusing and I didn't like it at all. I know for the most part, um, the POV of Ink Spell and really Ink Heart is third person omniscient, but like you see everyone. But I think good writing, um, if you really want to delve into the emotions of the characters, you would be third person but close. I forgot the term for it, but 
you're like close to the person that you're observing and you just concentrate on that one person because once you take advantage too much of the third person and you start exploring different people's minds you're not getting the thrill of it because you know what everyone's going through at the same time you're not experiencing the story through the lens of one character now, it might seem like i didn't like this book at all but man i actually loved it i actually bumped up my rating from three stars from when I first read it years ago to four stars because number one the character development in this book was so amazing with the exception of Farid. Farid I never really understood in the first book because he, he was a little younger maybe just a year younger he um, was pretty much Dustfinger's tail. He followed Dustfinger around and just just like really idolized Dustfinger. However, all throughout this book, from start to finish, he is the same person. He just loves Dustfinger and that's all he's focused on. He, he loves Let Maggie too, but like he loves Dustfinger. And it was even to the point that he actually felt jealous of Dustfinger's wife. Another thing that I really liked is the new cast of characters, like the people in the Ink World were so well developed and they had a lot of depth to them that you just really feel for a lot of them even the villains I love the villain in this and villains in this book there's just a lot of depth to them you understand them so much more than we explored other characters um, in, in Heart. The main reason that I bumped my rating up is because of the emotion that Ink Spell evokes. Most of my favorite books make me feel emotional pain like when something's just really painful that it's so beautiful what does that say about me but anyway this book does emotion and pain so well i i love cornelia funk's writing that when something bad happens even if it happens to a side character that we barely even met something bad happens she does such a great job of exploring the emotional impact that that causes to the rest of the characters and it was just amazing there were so many painful parts in this book that were just really really heart-wrenching and any author or any person who can make me feel that through books or movies or whatever or music even i have mad respect for i guess if you have read ink heart um, and you're thinking about Ink Spell, do you go into it with the expectation that it's going to feel a lot like high fantasy? It's not going to be a very contemporary light read. And as I said earlier, this is more of a YA read. There's a lot of themes that I wouldn't be comfortable um, letting a middle grade reader read, especially if you're more of a, you know, a traditional parent or friend of middle grade readers, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Ink Spell, maybe if they're a little older. But overall, this book is a four star read for me. Really liked it. I had some problems with it, but overall, it made me feel stuff. So that's my overall rating for Ink Spell. And now the moment we've actually been waiting for. <gasps> Ink Death. Okay, that was kind of weird. But here it is, Ink Death. And again, shout out to this book for sending me this copy of Ink Death for free in exchange for a review of this book. I'm really glad that I got, finally got this book because I've never gotten around to buying it because I didn't like Ink Spell my first time reading it. But now that I love Ink Spell and I'm so excited to read Ink Death. I've actually started reading, not the actual chapters, but like the, like the preliminary pages, the dedication and the summaries of the two previous books. And I also read the A to Z um, of the Ink World, like the characters and the place names. And I've learned a lot from the A to Z section of this book that made me intrigued because there's just some things that I'm like, so that's going to happen. It wasn't like super spoilery, but it was just, I was like, man, that's going to happen in the book. I am so down for that. Hello, people of the Splinternet. Man, so as you can tell, I just got out of the shower and I'm filming this first thing before I do anything else because man I have been putting this clip off way too long so you can tell I'm already way past not way past but past past the um, halfway mark um, of ink death but thankfully I um, did write some notes so that I can kind of give you my thoughts when they were still fresh and I'll tell you how that kind of comes into play with just like my busyness into my reading experience in a little bit. So Ink Death pretty much picks up right after the events of Ink Spell. Obviously there's gonna be spoilers for Ink Spell and Ink Heart, but um, we know that Dustfinger is dead and basically Farid, who is um, Dustfinger's kind of sidekick, he um, is with Orpheus now and Maggie and Risa and Mo, Mo are together now and Mo has kind of taken on the role of the Blue Jay. Basically what the goal of this um, of Ink Death is, is to basically 
um, defeat the like the boss villain, which is the Adder Head. And here's the thing, I've re I've reached. Okay, let me check. Okay, about 450 pages in, and here's the thing. There were a lot of chapters that just like got me in the feels. There were so many chapters that were just really emotional, and where. I think I like the chapters best where there's only really one character that we're focusing on and um, Cornelia Funk does such a great job of like exploring that character's emotions and just like them obser observing their surroundings and what they're experiencing. They're just really powerful and you don't see that a lot. Usually I enjoy like a lot of action, like action sequences and and like really um, like back and forth conversations, but the chapters where there's only one character and they're just like thinking and maybe there's like a side character that says something really briefly, but those chapters, man, there's some scenes that oh, were really, really powerful. Last time, um, Maggie and Mo pretty much want to stay in the ink world and, and I was wrong about last time. I said that Risa wanted to stay in the ink world too. But, and so, and, and I hated um, Maggie and Mo for wanting to stay in the Ink World because there's literally no reason for them to stay. And in Ink Death, you kind of see the reason why, because um, there's a lot of lives at stake if they just disappear. But at the beginning, I was just mad at everyone, mad at Maggie and Mo. Um, I didn't really like Farid. We have like a clear reason to dislike Farid in this book. Like I felt validated that I didn't really like him in the previous book. Um, because Fair is just, uh, at least in the ink world, I hated everyone except for Risa. Risa was literally the only person that made sense um, in the first, I guess, 300 pages of the book. And it, it made me mad because everyone else was mad at her. Everyone was like blaming her for everything bad that's going on. And when in the first place, <laughs> she's just trying to fix everything. We do see a little bit of Eleanor and Darius. Um, in this book, we see quite a lot of them actually, and man, Eleanor and Darius, like their friendship is so goals. Like we, I, we like to see that. Like they, obviously, um, because Eleanor has a really strong personality and Darius is kind of like a little more timid and submissive. Um, they're not really like romantically um, attached to each other, but man, if I have a friendship at their age, and I think they're pretty much in like their 50s, like both of them, maybe theirs is younger, but if I have a friendship like theirs at that age, I'd like that, man. I'd like to have that kind of friendship. But um, I want to talk a little bit about Orpheus, like the main um, antagonist. Well, not, I guess one of the main attack. I, I look at him as the main antagonist of this story because he's kind of controlling and he does a lot of really evil stuff um, in this book as opposed to... Um, the Adderhead, like the boss villain that I talked about, where he's just kind of, well, the Adderhead is more of like the main villain of the, like the story, like the ink world, but Orpheus is like the main villain of this story itself. And gosh, I hate him. So last time I said, Ink Spell is very much a young adult book. I feel the same about Ink Death, and there are some things that happen here that make me even want to say that this could be adult. There's just some themes that I'm not super comfortable um, recommending to younger readers. One of them is um, alcoholism, which I think is more young adult um, than adult in terms of like the themes. Like, I mean, kids are aware of alcoholism and how, um, um, I guess, drinking too much alcohol can ruin your life. There's another thing <laughs> that there's some scenes with Orpheus that I was just like, why is this here? Why is this here in this book? And that's just weird. And so I would not recommend it to, um, I guess, younger readers. Just realizing now that looking at my notes that Ink Death is kind of boring. Uh, which is um, terrible for me to say because, because I got this book from this book and um, expecting it to be better than Ink Spell because like it's the conclusion to the trilogy. It's just it just feels like a drag. And here's the thing. Um I've been really busy lately, which is part of the reason why um I haven't really filmed um when I reached the halfway mark. I've been really busy lately and um part of me thinks that that's the reason why I'm not enjoying Ink Death much. But I've also at the same time committed to read at least fifty pages a day. And I've been pretty consistent about that. So I'm getting um, enough immersion in the story, I think, to be able to judge it um, fairly, I think. And 
even though there were some chapters that were really, really good for the most part, the story just feels meandering. And here's the thing, there are a lot of elements that were introduced, elements to the story and this world that were introduced here in Ink Death that we did not see at all um, in the previous books that it kind of just feels like a cheat. And part of me feels like it could have been a shorter book and just like give me just like a bunch of like action scenes like give me like a bunch of really powerful scenes that lead to the climax and to the resolution and i'll be good with that but here there are a lot of um characters and um, elements to the story that were added to this world that just like this being the last book of the series i'm just like but it's like but we're not like so invested in those um elements and those characters that we can't really like enjoy it and savor it and experience it so i have mixed feelings about this right now if i'm being completely honest it feels like a three which is terrible because i i came i came into this book expecting it better than ink spell and probably i didn't think it would be better than ink heart although i part of me hoped it would but it's really not enjoying it as much as i thought i would the story is meandering, like hardcore. There's just there's like a lot of events that lead to other events that like don't really feel like they're contributing to like the resolution to the story. And even at this point, there's just like a lot of things that are being introduced and things, new things that are happening that I'm like, where is this even going? What, why, how is this going to lead to, I guess the outer has defeat because let's face it, it's a middle grade book. And so, you know, it's going to have a happy ending. I still do think that, um, given 300 or so more pages that I think Cornelia Funk can still pull the ending off. I mean, Inkheart, first part of the book, really most of the book is just pretty, felt predictable to me and um, I didn't care much, but part of that was just because it was a reread. But the last part of the book really got me and so I gave it, I kept it at five stars, but this book, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be happy about it. And actually, I've been trying to avoid reading other books while reading this just so I can dedicate myself to reading this book because it's been a hot minute since this book sent this book, wow, to me. And I just feel bad that I haven't given them a review yet. And it's only a 400 word review too and I haven't given them given it to them. But I think that has put me in such a slump that I decided to start reading another book. If you're curious, it's A Tale of Witchcraft, Witchcraft by Chris Colfer. Just kind of like pick up the pace in my like reading mindset because whenever I feel like I'm getting into a slump if to reading, like I try to avoid it as much as I can and read something that I know is more fast paced and more engaging so that I don't fall into not reading because I love to read and I don't want to lose that habit or the hobby. But Ink Death is putting me in sort of a slump. I'll let you know my final thoughts on this book. I hope it does get better. Um, but right now it's a three star read for me and I'll see you guys in the next clip. And we have now reached the last clip for this video, finally. Honestly, I don't have a lot more to say than I've already said in the last clip, so I'm just gonna pick up where I left off um, from the last time. From about the 400 page mark onwards to the end, it gets super complicated. The story gets super convoluted, like I swear, like every chapter, there's just another plot twist. And it, I honestly got old because like every chapter there's something new that's going on and there's something like a plot twist or like oh just kidding like this is gonna happen and like oh wait that's gonna happen and it was just so confusing like I love plot twists I think they add a lot to the story but if in almost every chapter there's something new that's being introduced and there's something like complicated that like complicated concept in the story being introduced and just it just gets really overwhelming not to get too spoilery, but Ink Death is the definition of the resurrection trope done wrong. Like, I honestly don't mind a lot of, like, resurrection tropes, like, in stories, like, I... I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Because... You know how when authors like, like play with your emotions and they're all of a sudden they're just like, just kidding. Like, ugh. I also want to say that um, it does get even darker, even more dark um, towards the end of the story, and that's more of a reason that I wouldn't classify this as middle grade, maybe young adult, but for me it would classify more as 
adult, maybe like an introduction to adult fantasy. And so I wouldn't really recommend this to young readers. Like if you're a younger reader, I would just recommend that you read just the first book. And it's a complete story. It can stand as a standalone. I wouldn't really recommend you to read Ink, Spell and Ink Death because number one, themes get more mature and number two the story just gets more complicated and if I'm being totally honest I didn't really like this book a lot which ah! is the first 200 pages of the book I would say like I would have rated the book like four stars and then like the next 200 like three stars because like we're just meandering and then the next I don't even know where my math is but basically the next chunk of the story gets like so complicated and convoluted that I was actually determined to rate this book two stars just because like there's just too much going on and we keep switching perspectives and there's just so many different perspectives that it just gets overwhelming it just it's just really complicated and, and I usually don't mind that like I love Name of the Wind even though it goes off on so many tangents it's still the thing is it has a focused perspective and this book there's just so many perspectives that it, you lose the value of one character's perspective, if you know what I mean. There was a part though, actually there were several parts that were, re I guess, a little redeeming, where I was like, man, this is a four-star chapter. There's one scene in particular where I was like, oh man, like, that was so good, because we reached the climax of the story, and then all of a sudden, and this has never happened, like, it, like all throughout this book and even the previous book, but when the climax hits, the font of the... Of certain words, and if you've read Ink Spell, you know which words I'm talking about. The font of certain words was different, and it changed, and it was just like, it just added more to the story. Like, I love how they formatted that part of the book, because it was just like, I felt the pressure and the intensity of the moment, just because they changed the font of certain words, and you'll know if you read Ink Spell. And that, for me, honestly, was like a five-star chapter. And so you might be asking, where do I actually stand now? <sighs> so for the most part of the book, it was a three-star read. And then, and then from about page 350, page 450, it was a solid two-star for me. Like, I, I did not like those parts at all. But then there were some parts where it was just, like, really good. It was, like, four stars. So I'm going to decide on three stars for this book. Which is saying a lot, because I rated Ink Heart five stars and then Ink Spell four stars, and now this is three stars, and I'm pretty confident about that. If we weren't using like a straight like five star rating, I would have rated like two point eight, two point five stars, and I know people, don't, some people don't like that, but this is just three stars for me, and I feel like that's pretty generous because I didn't. <laughs> I didn't like this book very much and it's so sad because I wanted to. The resolution was kind of satisfying and I loved the last chapter and it was just really fascinating and it, it felt like a good conclusion to the story. And, and I didn't feel super dissatisfied as I was in Ink Spell where I shared my frustration about the characters wanting to stay in this other world and I, just the way that this story ended. And if you get to the last chapter, you'll know what I mean. So I guess those are my thoughts for... The Ink World trilogy. Um, I'm glad I finally finished it. Like after so long, I finally got to this book. So thanks again to this book. That's with a Z. Um, go give them all the love. I'll leave links to everything about them below. Let me know in the comments if you've read Ink Heart, Ink Spell, or Ink Death, or any of them, and what your thoughts are. One thing I do want to say is that I have some big plans for this channel, especially for the upcoming year, 2021, so stay tuned to find out what those changes or updates will be. If you like this really long rambly video, then feel free to leave a like. Please forget to subscribe so that you can do it the next time you remember it, and I'll see you guys next time.